I like having fun with my music. You know, I I try not to take my music too seriously if it's on the rap side. You know, I feel like it should be about having fun. My name is Nick Oliveira. You're watching the indie scene. <laughs> My guest today is a Miami-based musical artist named Suze. Suze, thanks for joining us. Of course, man. You really do transcend genre. I mean, sometimes you'll be, you know, singing over chill beats. You'll be doing covers of Bad Bunny songs. Is there a particular sound that you're searching for? I don't think it's a particular sound. I think I just I've been doing pretty much all of the genres and trying to still make it sound like unique, like me. So like even if it's a Spanish rap song, even if it's a rap like a rap song, uh, R and B, rock, you'll know it's me. So I wanted like I kind of want to like take over that, you know, and just have my own sound, but still have a very diverse sound. How would I mean? How would you describe like the typical Sue Sue's track? Typical Sue's, I would say some R and B smooth stuff. So currently on Spotify, I mean, I think my gateway song for you was uh, I Am Why I Miss You. Yeah, that was a good one. Can you talk? I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> there's a reason why it's number one on Spotify. <laughs> so well, what was the process behind like creating a song like that? Well, for example, that song, I made it on GarageBand on my phone. So like, I think 2016, I made it on my phone in GarageBand and I put it on, I put it on SoundCloud and it was just me like, Literally 3 a.m. It was raining. I was like, you know what? I'm kind of sad, and I'm kind of missing somebody. So you know what? I'm gonna make a song that just embodies that. And then I put it on SoundCloud, and it got like 20k. And I was like, whoa, that's that's surprising. <laughs> and then I ended up like remaking it, and that's the version that's on like streaming services now. So you had this very stripped down production process. Everything was very quick. Have you ever labored over a song and then put it out there and you didn't get the response that you wanted? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But recently, like, I would say my EP doesn't get as much love as like my my uh, recent music has. Um, but even though it's very personal to me, I know that because I'm I'm working on an album now. I know that. Once people listen to that, they'll see how much I've grown from my EP. So I can kind of, I know that my EP isn't as good as I can be, in a way. But I, it's very personal for me. What kind of themes do you touch on in your upcoming EP? Um, well, it's called Duality of Self. So like, you know, I have, um, when I make music, I have, I would like to say I have an alter ego, which is Zeus, you know. That's like my rap. Uh, alter ego I would say um, it's two completely really different personas but at the end of the day it's just me um, it's just different parts of me so that's why I want to name it you know duality of self so it's gonna be half you know my soft more like emotional side and then my other side is gonna be you know just like real me just like rapping and it's gonna be cool you speak of duality do you think I guess everybody has like a sort of, uh, let's call it a shadow self, like a part mm -hmm. of them that they don't always embrace. What do you think, what do you think keeps some people from embracing that side of themselves which they, I guess, can't face all the time? I guess it's just like this, the being vulnerable is very hard for a lot of people. And I know like for this album in particular, I know I'm getting a lot, I like very vulnerable. It's been a very long process to make that album. It's been like a year and a half so far and I've, I've like, I've made songs that are amazing and then like I'll sit on them for months and then they end up not being like up to par with what I want in uh, in a spectrum of like what my album should sound like or the topics that I do want to touch on and it just doesn't end up cutting it so then I have to like rework my album again it's just like I take songs out I put songs in and my mindset changes so then it's it's a pro it's a long process yeah, have you ever so what comes first typically when you do a song? Like, Do you say, hey, I want to make a song about a relationship or about duality? Do, I mean, do you go in first with the topic in mind or do you start with a beat? How does it go about? Yeah, I think the beat comes first sometimes and then I'll kind of just like uh, freestyle over it and I'll see what I'm feeling in that moment and then I'll kind of get that freestyle and then I'll kind of like deconstruct it and then I'll make the song like based out of like what I just deconstructed from the freestyle. 
you're a mix of Cuban and Dominican uh, on your social media. Mm. It says all pronouns welcome. Yeah. I mean, what role does identity play in making music for you? I think it plays a very important role because um, if people that struggle with identity listen to my music and can find like solace and like me saying things that not a lot of artists do, you know, dealing with um, gender um, issues, sexuality, all of that stuff. You know, I feel like not a lot of people talk about that in songs and they should. Um, and I feel like identity is super important, so is representation. Was there anybody in particular who you saw and you were like, me, that's, that's who I am. Like, that's who represents me. Was there anybody in particular? Um, not gonna lie, I don't think so. You know, that's, and I think that's, I think that's the problem. You know, a lot of us grew up without representation, um, and I just want to be that person for somebody, you know, one day. There's a lot of talk about whether or not celebrities or artists should weigh in on social issues. Do you think an artist has a responsibility to talk about that, or do you think they have the right to just make art and not speak out publicly? I, I know there's a lot of debate around that, but I think for sure. I think. You know, it's. There, I know a lot of people say like, you know, you should separate the art from the person, but I don't think you should. I think the person is the per like they make the art. You know, you should be able to speak your mind, and it should reflect in your music. You know, your music is your product. It is. It's you sometimes, unless you know you just like make music about you know nothing. But I feel like they do have a responsibility in a way because there's people that look up to you and there's people that want your opinion and they want your insight on things. I don't know, maybe that's just me. <laughs> what was the... When you set out to make a song like Painted Gold, what were you setting out to create? Okay, so I have this uh, producer friend. He sends me a beat, I would say, two or three beats almost every day. You know, and that was... And then, you know, I kind of make stuff over it. And that, that one beat, I was just like, Wow, man, that's so funky. Makes me wanna like fall in love. And that's what I wanna, I wanted to do. You know, Painted Gold is about, you know, it's about a girl, obviously. So I just wanted to make a feel good song that, you know, you can kind of dedicate to somebody. What was the production of Painted Gold like? Once I got that beat, I was like, I, I need to do something on it. And I went on to Logic, I recorded my vocals. Most of it, half of it is freestyled, so the first half is freestyled. And then the second is um, is written, but the first half, you know, completely freestyled. It's it's funny though, you know, because I have a rap group called Roma, right? So then we have two producers um, in there, and they send me beats also, and they make me beats. But I have friends that also produce, so then this, this one in particular, you know, he would send me two or three beats, you know, every day. And you know, I'm not, I'm actually not that close with him, but like we've, we've met once. <laughs> and um, the connection was just there in terms of like um, producer and artist. It's just like, you know, when you have that click, it's just so, so good. And I know that he didn't want to lose that either. You guys dropped a track called Cor Corona Virus. Yeah, yeah. What? Let's talk about that. I mean, I, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, um, We've been a group for three years. We haven't met in person, by the way. This is um, this group is eight of us through, spread throughout the U.S. Like I'm talking, you know, uh, New Jersey, Texas, North Carolina, Seattle, California, Portland, like all over. <laughs> so we've never met in person. We've done everything online. How does that work? FaceTime. Group FaceTime is wonderful, I would say. Thank thank you, Apple, for, for making that, I would say. You know, some not not all of us get on at the same time sometimes, which, you know, it kind of sucks. But again, it's a, a mixture of time zones and, you know, we all have, like, school and work. So it can kind that kind of gets in the way, but um, it's really hard, actually. <laughs> How did, have you done live shows with any of these guys before? Um, well, one of them, the one that lives in North Carolina, he used to live here, so he was like, you know, he's like my homeboy, and then I, I got him into the group, and then he ended up moving away. That's the only person I've met from the, from the, from the group, but I haven't done any live shows with them. We're planning on, on, you know, meeting next year. Whose idea was it to actually say, to put out this track, Coroma Virus? It was, um, honestly, it was a joke. 
you know, one of uh, they made uh, Jackson the one of the producers. He made a, a beat of like you know somebody coughing. Obviously, we we're like, bro, let's just make a song about Corona and let's just release it just because it's fun. And at the end of the day, that's what I like. You know, I I like having fun with my music. You know, I. I try not to take my music too seriously if it's on the rap side. You know, I feel like it should be about having fun. All of my social media tags are Suze Type Beat, so S U Z T Y P E B E A T. And on all streaming services, my name is Suze, S U Z. My name is Nick Oliveira. You've been watching The Indie Seat, brought to you by Context of a Generation. Tune in next time to The Indie Seat. So that was the Indie Seat. If you like what you saw and you want to be a partner, or if you want to collaborate with us, even if you're an artist and you want to submit your work, check out our website, contextofageneration.org, or go ahead and submit an email to us at submit at contextofageneration.org. And for all the artists, make sure you put your name, your social media handles, and attach some of your work as well. And for those who are interested in being a partner or collaborating, please email us and we would love to reach back out. Peace. That was the Indie Seat. Thank you.